Good morning to everybody who is with us here today. Here, whether you're in this building, here, whether you're watching wherever you are, good morning to you. And I just want to give us all a moment to be silent, please. Just give you a couple more seconds to take your seat and settle down. Thank you, Jesus. We made it. We made it to see 2023. Thank you, Jesus. We made it. And we're happy that we made it but we're aware that some of us, some of who was among us has not made it. Some who we probably thought were going to make it has not made it. And if you're not aware yet, on Wednesday we lost our beloved Rebecca Williams. Can I ask us, as we are in the tradition of doing, just to stand for a moment, uh, for a minute in silence as we honor the memory of this incredible saint who was a part of us for so long and now who is a part of the cloud of witnesses. So let's just take a moment to be silent. The word of the Lord tells us that those who mourn will be comforted. And so it's our prayer that God will comfort each of us in here who knew her and loved her, but that he will especially comfort those who knew her and loved her most. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Please take your hands. Happy New Year to you. While we have lost, I've just saw my nephew. That's my nephew and his wife and his little nephew and his my grand nephew. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Baba. Hello, Baba. I didn't see him. Sorry, you're embarrassed now. Hello. <laughs> While I know that we have lost not just Mommy Rebecca many through this year, we have to acknowledge that we have made it. Amen? Amen. And so while we weep on the one hand, we rejoice on the other for God's goodness, his faithfulness, his love to have kept us through what has been a horrendous year <laughs> on so many fronts. So we need to just spend some time <laughs> rejoicing with each other. So please, take a few minutes just to go around and <laughs> greet each other, wish each other a happy new year, and, uh, and bless one another, because we're grateful that we're still here holding on. Thank you. Okay, I gave
gave you extra time than, than you normally get. So. <laughs> So I expect you to be obedient and to retake your seats. Yes, sister, yes, I'll come over there. I'll come over. <laughs> huh? oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Especially on the first day of the Lord's year 2023. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 verse 28 says this. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. That is no mamby pamby scripture. It says, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We saw all that has happened in this past year. Our lives might have been shaken, but has God's kingdom been shaken? No, because it cannot be shaken. And we thank him for that. And I'm, no, I'm sure we're gonna thank him some more with the worship team. Thanks, Sister Pauli. And uh, happy new year to you all. Happy new year. As uh, Sharon said, we're grateful to, to uh, reach 2023 when so many of us um, in, this, in this congregation haven't made it. We're grateful. And we're going to praise God this morning. Amen. We're going to give our thanks and our praise for the year that has passed, but also for the year to come. Everything is in his hands, amen? Everything in his hands. So we're gonna bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we're gonna offer our sacrifices of thanksgiving. Meaning we're gonna praise him with abandon. I hope. Yes, amen. I hope. There has to be a change, there has to be a shift in some way of how we praise the Lord and how we give our thanksgiving. And I'm praying that you know this year we can do that through um, our fellowship together, through our worship, through our own personal um, you know, relationship with God, that we can worship Him in a different way. Yeah? Let's try not to do what we did last year. But at the same time, we don't want to throw the baby at, out with the bathwater, no? We don't want to do that, but we want to, you know, move to the next level and we have to make some changes. So, stand with me as we bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Please stand.
praise. Lord, we offer up to you your thanksgiving, Lord, for the year that has passed. But Lord, we are thanking you in advance of the year to come. Lord, we are expecting great things. Lord, we want to give you glory and praise for the things you will do. Lord, we just come before you in expectancy of what you will do in 2023. So Lord, we're going to continue to give you the glory for the great things you have done and will do. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So loved he the world. He gave us his son. Amen. Amen.
the Lord for what he has done and what he will do this year. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. You get the theme today, don't you, praise? You get the theme. Praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. Thanking him for what he has done.
morning, church. Happy New Year to you all. Hope you're all well. <laughs> okay, as you probably realize, Fernie's down to do the prayers, but she's not here. So, you have me instead. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let us pray. Most of you are aware of the prayer list, and you're aware that there are quite a number of people in there, and it's forever growing. There are also names of people who are not in it, so we're just going to remember them in our prayers, okay? Let us pray. <clears throat> Most righteous and loving Father, as we gather here in your presence, it's an honor. Can you hear me? It's an honor and a privilege for us all to be here. And we thank you and pray your anointing be upon us all, that every need will be met, because Lord, you are the King, Master, Saviour, Healer, Comforter and Friend. The prior list, as I say, gets longer, so we lift the names currently on the list to you, Lord. We are also mindful of those whose names are not listed, Neither are we aware of any ongoing concerns that may be weighing them down at this time. <clears throat> so we present it all to you, Lord God, knowing that your spirit is everywhere and you see and you know every specific needs. We bring those in hospital at this moment, Lord. We pray for healing, restoration of mind, soul and body. Grant your peace on them all. For those experiencing the pains and losses of bereavement of loved ones, Lord, we pray your comfort, your peace for the many families and friends. For those with ongoing pains and health concerns, Lord, we ask that you reach out and touch those affected areas of concern and bring relief, comfort, and healing. For those experiencing the pains of isolation, loneliness, and the effects of the pressures of daily living, Lord, we pray your peace, comfort, and protection over them. Lord, we pray for our children and young people, both within our circle and the community. We pray that they may, may be surrounded with love, that they grow in wisdom and confidence in your powers. We ask that you cover and protect them from harm and danger, that they make positive choices daily. We pray for the parents, guardian, and all those who share responsibility for children and young people that they nurture them with love, tenderness and wisdom of your teachings, that they will know when to say yes and when to say no. We lift our church family to you, Lord, and thank you for everyone. We pray for unity, tolerance, humility, peace and love as we journey on in the absence of a pastor, we thank you for all those supporting church activities to ensure that church life and fellowship continues during this period without an appointed pastor. And we pray that whatever each does, our actions, our decisions will be for the life and good of the church and not for personal glory. Lord, we trust in your timing to send the right person to the role here at Smalley Baptist Church. So we prayerfully await you. At this time, we lift our community and country to you, Lord. We pray for peace, acceptance, and love for all cultures and races. Help us to be tolerant of our differences, Lord. You created and made us all. We leave those areas living within the fear of conflicts, ongoing wars, 
natural disasters in other parts of the world, causing such pain and devastation to lives. It seems never-ending, Lord. We pray for those appointed as leaders across all areas. O oh Lord, grant them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, that they lead with integrity and compassion, and above all, they will strive to maintain peace and love for others. Lord, we leave this prayer list request at your throne of grace and mercy, of peace, of healing, of love and hope, trusting you, Lord, to do your will. We know there are no time limits to what you can do, Lord, so we leave everything to you, spoken and unspoken, into your hands. Help us, Lord, to help others as we wait upon you. Father God, only you knows what lies ahead of each of us. We just want to say thank you for bringing us all thus far. We pray that you continue to walk with us, guide and protect us as we journey on wherever you lead us. So Father, we place into your hands our friends and family. Father, we place into your hands things we cannot do. Father, we place into your hands the things that are troubling us. Because Lord, we know we can trust you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. church um, happy blessed new year hopefully the lord will keep us guide us and have good things for us for 2023 okay so i'm going to start with the first part of the notice thanks to all who came to and helped with the social yesterday i hope you all had a lovely time um now this is the first sunday of our journey of our 150th year anniversary for the church so as the weeks go on, we'll be making preparation. Okay, now we've got dates for our diaries. So the next coffee morning will be held on Saturday, the 21st of January. The next hour of power prayer evening will be here on Thursday, the 26th of January. Okay. Now, the new match club starts on the 3rd of January and sisterhood the 16th of january now the house group will start on thursday the 5th of january of this week okay and the knit and natter that date needs to be confirmed with may the internet will start on the new tn tinternet tinternet yeah we we'll start back on Wednesday, the 11th of January. Next week, Sunday, will be our convert service at 11 o'clock, so all who can attend. And the funeral for Isilda Harris will be Friday, the 13th of January. Okay. Um, birthdays. Now, I think we'd miss Joy's birthday which was on the 27th, and um, Irving Green was also on the, the, the 11th of de December, correct me, so any birthdays today? 
or the coming week? No? Okay, um, I have, I don't know who remember Lamar Richards, my um, nephew, it will be his birthday on Thursday, he will be 24, and then my husband Austin, he'll be the big 60, the big 60, if he knows I've told you this, he'll be 60 on Saturday, so um, he's catching up, I'm not far behind him to be fair, but I won't tell him that, okay, um, right, John, I think we'll be doing the prayer. And Lloyd and Simon will be collecting the offering. Also, the flower card is also available for anyone who wants to put their names down. So anyone who, want, who hasn't put anything in the offering plate or want to, if they can put their hands up, and then Lloyd and Yvette will come to them. And John will be doing the prayer. Collection. Are there any new people that attended today? If they raise their hands, okay, we clap and we welcome them. Okay, Melody. Okay. I've been told also it's Janice's birthday. So once we've done the prayer, we'll sing happy birthday. for happy birthday. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to be singing. I start up with Pauline. <laughs> thing man okay I can hear myself now thank you sister Janet so is there anybody who would like to share a testimony of what God has done for you is doing for you in the past year I'm sure there's everybody who wants to give a testimony because you know he brought us through but is there anybody who wants to share a testimony okay if you feel like you want to later on oh sister Esther are you saying you want to Yeah. Uh, 
Is Once you've done that, just a poll and you can vote. Thank you. For the worship. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Oh, do you want, do you want to do the worship now? Or no, no, no. Okay. So, Happy New Year, everyone. I just want to say thank you to all of you for your prayers, for supporting us as a family, for guiding us, for loving us, and for just being our family. So I would just like to sing the blessing. It's a cappella, <laughs> um, and it goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. Would he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you? The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and around you and within you he is with you he is with you he is for you he is for you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your in your weeping and rejoicing is for you, 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 is with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. That's my prayer for every single one of you. Good morning, church. I just want to praise the Lord, you know, uh, because uh, since 2020, I have to think of it. <laughs> you know, uh, my husband passed away, and then I had all everything, and I thought my hand was near. But then, you know, uh, God is good. And what I want to say was, one day during the week, I was sitting in my in my back garden, and I looked up in the sky and there was a rainbow. And this rainbow is striked me. You know, the sun was shining. Don't know if you saw it, but there was a rainbow in the sky. And I thought, you know, this was God's promise. God had promised this rainbow in the sky. And that's from Genesis, from the beginning of our, from he started to refurbish the earth. He put this rainbow in the sky for us to remember, and he said for him to remember. So when I saw this rainbow on Sunday, I thought, God promised, 
and I can see this promise. So whatever he promises, he delivers. So you know, that's why I praise the Lord. And I couldn't say that I'm not saying that the promises of God is real. And God is real. I have tested, I have proven, and I found out he is real. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
He's our God. He's great. He's great. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's so great. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. How great. Then sings my
So we're going to pray for Sharon, our sister Sharon Jones, is going to bring our word today. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your servant here today to bring your word. Lord, we pray that every word that comes from her mouth today will be from you to us as a blessing for us to take into today, to this week, to this month, and to and into the rest of 2023. Lord, we pray, Lord, that any nervousness dissipates right now, Lord. Lord, any concern, anything that's not of you, Lord, goes right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, that only your power, Lord, only your strength, and only your words will be evident here today, Lord Jesus. This I pray in your holy and your mighty name. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is this on? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm struggling now. <laughs> Just one minute, please. <laughs> thank you. Actually, tissue because uh, yeah, I need some more tissue. It's hard to come up here and speak after you've just been bawling your eyes out. of God, always, but particularly, and this is not why I'm crying, but I'm just overwhelmed with the goodness of God. But I wanted to share my testimony for two minutes of just how good God has been, because like probably many of you, in the past three months, uh, before, before, before all of Liz Trust did all of her foolishness, um, I was just barely affording my mortgage like so many other people. And then in the past three months, my mortgage went up by 150 pounds. So I had no idea how I was going to afford my mortgage. And with the energy bills. So I'm one of them who is up here today saying, thank you, Jesus, for the 66, 67 pounds that they give us each month until March. And when March comes, the God who took care of me and you in this period will continue to do so, amen? So I just want to say thank you, Jesus, that even though my mortgage has gone up 150 pounds and there's all these additional things, that I'm still warm and I still eat food. That is no short miracle. That's a miracle. God, in his amazing provision, has continued to take care of me. And I'm sure he has continued to take care of me. And even when they stop giving us uh, the money in March, because it was God who was taking care of us, it wasn't them, we will be fine too. Amen? So we're going to read from the book of Nehemiah. Hope you have it opened. And can I just say thank you, Jesus, for all of us who were here last night who can still stand and be here this morning and have a voice. Thank you, Sister Pauline. <laughs> As we go to screaming and shouting yesterday. <clears throat> um, I don't know what page, because I have this digital thing. If someone finds it, can they shout out the page, please? Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. Yeah, starting in chapter 1. So when you find the second page, so that others can find it, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Page 
Kilion, son of Hakaliah, in the month of his leg, in the twentieth year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws, and gave your servant Moses. Sorry, the decrees and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was a cupbearer to the king. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look sad? When you are not ill, this can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad? when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. The king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried, so that I can rebuild it. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, How long will your journey take, and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, If it pleases the king, May I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me with safe conduct until I arrive in Judah? And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy? And because the gracious hand of my God was on the king granted my requests. So I went to the governor of Trans Euphrates and gave the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want us to look at a few things um, today. My family notes. And so, 
Nehemiah gets bold now because he recognizes that God is with him from what the king has said. So after the king asks him, what do you want? It says here, and I like this because it's something I do all the time when I'm, when I'm after something myself. He says, then he and I said, then it says, then I prayed to the God of heaven. So I suspect because he wasn't expecting the king's response to be, what do you want? And he's asking this question. He's just sent up one of those quick prayers that we do in the moment, quietly. Lord, help me. Show me what to say. Show me what to do. Then I prayed to the God of heaven. And I answered the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me into the city of Judah where my ancestors are buried. And I can rebuild it. And the king said, yeah, that's fine. And I suppose for Nehemiah, he thinks, wow, he's going to let me have time off to go do this. This is unheard of. That's brilliant. Thank you. But then Nehemiah now gets bold. He's recognized that the favor of the Lord is on him in that moment. And so he doesn't just come away with having paid leave in effect of. He then says, it then says, I also said to him in verse 7, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to take to the trans Euphrates so that they will provide me with safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. So he now just he doesn't just now want paid time off. He now wants the king to write letters to people to say, give this man a safe passage to go. No, that's just going above and beyond and asking too much of the king. But he didn't stop there. He then says, and may I go to your royal park keeper to ask them to give me wood, timber. Not just a little bit of timber, but he wants timber to repair the wall. He wants timber to repair the temple. And he wants timber to build a house he's going to live in while he's there. This is a big ask. This is no small thing, but this man has been emboldened by what he's recognized, he's recognized God's hand in it, so it's given him the courage that he wants or that he needs to go further and ask more. Amazing, amazing. This story, I'll tell you, I love this, love, love this story. And it says here uh, in the B part of verse 8 of chapter 2, it says, and because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. And because the gracious hand of the Lord was on me, the king granted my request. And then in, at the end of verse 9 it says, the king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. So, let's just recap. Nehemiah, this is unheard of for someone in the royal court to be given time off. But he gets time off. And we learn later in the story that the wall, they say, it took 52 days to build, which is incredible. But that would have meant that, and because he told us in here that he asked for the time, so he probably had an idea of what the time would take, so he probably asked for all that time, maybe a little more, to cover himself. But he's asked for the king to let him out of his sight, to not have his cupbearer. So you don't just take up another cupbearer because you have to be able to trust them. So he was vulnerable, the king, for all that time. Nehemiah wasn't there. So him letting Nehemiah go is a big thing. It's not, it's not a small thing. That's the first thing. But then he doesn't just give him that wish. He then responds to Nehemiah's wish to ask for wood and for his to ask for um, safe passage. And then, without Nehemiah asking, he then sends his army with him. I suppose some of it is, 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 is because he wants to make sure that his cupbearer is safe because he wants him to come back safe because he, you know, he regards him and he's been working with him for many years. So I'm, so, I, so I'm not saying the king is unselfish in why he did that, but still, it's not a small thing, not a small thing that he's done. So I want to look at Nehemiah, this man, who didn't have a calling from God to go and do this. This was just, he heard what was happening in his city. He wasn't happy about it. <coughs> he wasn't happy about what's happening in his city. And he decided to do something because it didn't sit well with him. He didn't say to his brother, well, can you round up men to do something about it? He tried to do something about it. He wasn't any super person. 
There was no, nothing, no indication in the scripture at all where God said, now Nehemiah, I want to do this thing for me. There, there's no evidence of that. It just says this man heard this thing and he prayed to the Lord. He was distressed about it. And he asked God for the favor. For favor. And God did that for him. I don't know about your life, but certainly my life has been a series of see, pray, do. There have been times when God has spoken specifically and said, do this particular thing. Well, I have to say that's very rare. Very rare. Very rare. Nine times out of ten, I'm just happily going along. Something happens, a series of things. This person says that, that person, I see this, and you just fall into doing something that the Lord wants you to do. I don't know if it's that way for you. Literally, a series of just saying yes to something. Not waiting for someone else to do it. Which we often can do, you know? We're busy, we're tired, so if someone says, this person needs some help, and just put it out there, can anybody help? Most of us will want to help, but we'll think, I just can't extend to that, so someone else will do it. But here Nehemiah, thought to himself, I am the one who's going to respond to this, not because I'm great, but just because I want to do something about it. I was thinking of a couple instances in our church where, where that has happened. Um, a couple years ago, Fern, do you remember the minibus that she needed for her school? She lives in England, but her primary school, and mommy Fern is young, so she left that primary school decades ago. But she heard that all these children had to be walking from the house to get to school. And the school needed a minibus, which I think the total cost would have been the equivalent of 15,000 pounds, which is no small money. And she committed in her heart that she, I think it was 5,000, I think she wanted to get a minimum of. But she decided, nobody asked her, that she sees that there is this need and she's going to respond. And then she got others involved. She said to us, listen, would you help me with this? No big thing. And then we saw the pictures <coughs> a year or two ago when they, they got the minibus because of others like Fern who just said, listen, I see this need. It pains my heart to hear this. I'm going to pray to the Lord and ask him to help me to get this done. Everything that we have done in this church is birthed out of something like that. I'm sure when we started Crossroads 31 years ago, it was probably similar circumstances. Someone probably walked in here and needed some food. And then another person walked in and needed food, and then someone said, let's see what we can do. There was probably no parting of the clouds, no lightning moment, but a ministry started. And every single thing that we do, I'm sure, probably started in a similar way. There would be times when God gave us a specific prophetic word that birthed that, but I think most of them happened because we saw a need and we filled it. So of that, what we're doing the baby bank as well. It's just a few of us women across the churches together gathered, having dinner, and we were talking about what, what, what do we see the need for in our community? And one person um, is a, is a um, not a midwife, a health visitor. And so she was constantly getting requests from the lady saying, I don't have this, I don't have that. And she thought, if we could just help them. And now, as you see the baby box around there, it's constantly full by your gifts. Because you know how hard it is for someone to cope when they don't have something. So you keep giving it, even though you may not have um, stuff for yourself. So where am I going with this? I said at the beginning of this service that we made it to 2023. This is not a, a day like another day. It's not. This is a new day of a new year that we will never see again. But more importantly, we saw this one. We're not here because there's no space in heaven. We're here because God still has something for us to do. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Every single one of us who are sitting in, in this place and those who are outside of this place listening to this, God has things for us to do. And I can't 
tell you how many times in my walk as a Christian that I have heard people say, and I've heard people have an idea and suggest it just in conversation with a friend, and someone has said, you can't, you can't do that, that's, that's either foolishness or that's beyond you, or that's foolishness. That is what is foolishness. Nehemiah had nothing to start with, and yet he was able to, by his leading, rebuild a whole city. It, there might be things that God has laid on your heart years ago. You might have done it recently. You might have been reflecting as the, the year is changing um, into a new year. <coughs> well, you know, you think of flowers, they, they grow, they bloom, they do their thing, and then they die. Rebecca Williams left us this week because she had fulfilled her purpose on this earth. Every single one of us who still remain here have not. There are still things that we have to do. And so my question to you is, what are the things that you, that have been on your mind, on your heart, that you have seen that you may not have done something about, you may have. You might not think it's significant enough to do anything about. Nehemiah wasn't called of God to do this. I believe God steered him into doing it, but there was nothing that made him think it was a calling. And yet, because of his faith, plus the favor of God, God's special city, Jerusalem was able to be rebuilt, the walls, the temple. That's incredible that this one little man was able to accomplish this thing. It is absolutely no different from any of us in here. It is one little person who started um, uh, anything that we've done, whether it's Crossroad, whether it's Jericho. I think of Jericho, uh, and uh, I don't know what the exact vision was that God gave you at the time, Christine, but when I see Jericho and all that God is using it to do, Decades later, it's incredible. Incredible. It's incredible. And Christine is one of us here. So, any one of us that's in this room, and many have, many people in this room have done things that nobody else knows about. We look at people and we say, oh, they're just someone who comes and sits here on a Sunday. There are things that God is using people to do. But at my charge to you, this year is do not waste a single moment. Not a single moment. Pastor Owen preached at uh, our lovely Mrs. Brown's funeral a couple of weeks ago, and honestly, it stuck with me. It's something that we all know, but he so resonated. And he just, do you remember? He said, take a breath in and a breath out. You don't know if that's your last one. You don't know if it's your last one. I'm here talking to you now, and later on there may be a prayer band message to say that I just died. That's not being morbid, that's the truth. I can go any minute. When I do go, when I get to the other side, I want to be able to say, Lord, every single thing you pointed me to, that you gave me to do, Every talent that you gave me, every gift you gave me, every any, anything at all that I was, any ability, I have none of it left. I used every single drop. I used every single, none of it left. So if you are thinking about, if you're one of those people who thinks about, what do I need to speak to the Lord about at the beginning of the year? Can I encourage you to ask him to help you to hear and to see the little breadcrumbs that he gives us as he leads us into doing one thing or, or the other. Because what we don't want to do is the things that he has given us to do, to not do them. Remember, there's not, not necessarily any lightning strikes. Sister Sharon, Mommy Brownie's daughter, is here sitting at the back. Sister Sharon isn't a member of my church, isn't a member of this church. I'm not allowed to give up Sharon. But, but when Rob said, we're getting a bit old now, we can't keep doing, going the 
place that we do the crossroads, we need fresh blood to step in. Shai said, I'll do it. There was no, was there any lightning moments for you, Shai? You just, you just knew there was something to do and you feel the need. And, and those of us who have been praying for her in the past year know that she was sick from the beginning of that and throughout, and yet she's still out there all the time doing it. There are things God has us to do, and there are blessings in it. So I want to encourage each of us that to just spend some time asking God, Lord, help me to say yes to the things you're pointing me to. Help me to say yes to step into the things you're calling me to. Help me to not be dissuaded by naysayers. And naysayers can come in the form of friends, very good friends and family. And not because they're naysaying necessarily, but just because they can't see it. But it's not them that means to see it. It's you. So if God is showing you something, and he might be showing you something right now while we're talking, do it. It says in here, Nehemiah was afraid, but, that's what it says when he approached the king, he because he knew that he could be, the, the king could kill him if he wanted to, to ask such a question. It said Nehemiah was afraid, but, he had prayed and asked God to give him favor. And that courage resulted in his dreams being, and prayers being answered and in, a, in a powerful way for his city. This one man did this great thing for his city. And how many times do we see, whether it's on the Queen's awards or just you know, on, on television or wherever, how this person, just this little person in a little corner that nobody's heard of, did this thing just because they said yes and well, okay, there's something that needs to be done that needs Look at that lady in lockdown who, it was a teacher I think, she realized that one of her children, or many of her children, she found, were sleeping on the floor. They had no beds. And she just thought, let me see if I can find some, a bed from someone here. And then she ended up throughout lockdown, hundreds of thousands of beds and having them delivered. She's just a little lady in a little corner who saw a need and responded. And God is pointing a little need to every single one of us. Because if we're still here, there's something he has for us to do. What that looks like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Nehemiah saw something. He prayed. Then he did something. scriptures is that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And many people have been bogged down by life. Too bogged down to see. I lift my hands up as well because there are things that the Lord has shown me that I'm like, okay, I'll do that, but I just can't do it now. We've been bogged down by life. And so there are things that God has been showing us. We know, you know the things. Things that you felt, but you just say, when I get the chance to just get over this thing, to do this thing, I'm going to do that. Please, the scripture says the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Has not, can never, will never. So it means that we have the ability to overcome those things that press in on us, that try to squeeze out the things that God has set aside for us to do. The Holy Spirit that God planted in you at the point of your salvation, for those who are saved. And if you are someone in here that is not saved, you want the Holy Spirit to fall on fire on you. We will pray for you. We will pray for you. Because it is that Holy Spirit that he's put in us that enables us to do these things. The verse, um, the scripture, where is it? I love this scripture. Second Peter 1 verse 3 says, His divine power has given 
us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. We already have all that we need to do, what we need to do. That's why me and my have to pray, trust God and then do. We have what we need. Sometimes I hear people say you need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. No disrespect to anybody, but that's foolishness. When Jesus filled us with the Holy Spirit at the point of our salvation when we accepted him, it was once and for all. It doesn't need any talking up. We don't need it again. He gave us everything that we needed. Now, there are certain things that we might do that, that cause that the spirit to be dimmed inside us because we're not probably, you know, doing the things that we, he, he, he might have been leading us to. But the spirit itself is there. And when he downloaded it in us, it had everything. It came fully loaded. It came fully loaded. It's, it's like a car. You might have a car that's fully loaded, that has all the bells and whistles. But every day you use the brakes or the hand or the, 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 the steering wheels. You might not use the bells and whistles all the time. But it's there. So if you need to use it, you have it there to call upon. And Jesus has put that Holy Spirit in you. So every single thing that you need is there. Everything is there already. It's there. It's there. And I, that was one of my favorite scriptures. But this one, which many of you know well, Ephesians 3, verse 20 to 21, which says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably <clears throat> more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. But that's not even the best bit. John 14, and now I have many scriptures which are my favorites, but this one, if anybody's ever heard me speak anywhere, there's no sermon I preach without using it. It's John 14, verse 12 to 14. And you might want to mark this in your Bibles. Because it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me, and this is Jesus talking, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that my Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. You will do even greater things than these. So Jesus is saying, we can do even greater things than he did. This, this God who heals people and rose the, the dead to life. Jesus said, we will do even greater things than him. It's hard to wrap your mind around that. I, I don't know if it's hard for you, but it's hard for me. I know that it's true and I'm excited by it. But so many things in our learning teaches us that it can't possibly be true. But Jesus said it, so it is true. That we will do the great things of him. And it says here, I'll do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified. In the Son, you may ask for whatever, for anything in my name and I will do it for you. Now hear me. If you go and ask him for a car, just for the sake of it, just because you want to get this big fancy, you know, sports Mercedes, that's not what God means. If you ask for anything, in his name that lines up with the will of what he desires. So Nehemiah asked for things, and because it was God's desire for Jerusalem to be rebuilt, God answered that prayer. That's what God means. That's what God means. In a moment, we're going to sing the song, I Swear God. It's a beautiful song, we love to sing it. And, and I'm not patronizing you today when I say it. Can I ask you, encourage you, that when we're singing it today, to really, even beyond singing it, to pray it. To pray it. Prophetically pray it. To ask God to help us, myself included, to set aside those things 
those who might be willing to help to join you in it if it's something that you need support for. There are some things we do by ourselves and other things we need people to help us with. A line in that song says, um, the sacred flame, now I feel the sacred, oh the joy of its full salvation, now I feel the sacred flame, glory, glory to his name. Oh the joy of full salvation, now I feel the sacred flame. The sacred flame, we know that the Holy Spirit is always represented in fire. And how many of us, when we just found our salvation, were on fire for the Lord? But life and circumstance has wearied us. Well, I'm asking you today, as I'm asking and praying for myself, that God would restore to you the joy of your salvation, of my salvation, to be on fire again, to make sure that each day that we live, I don't want to say if we get to next year, that each day that we live, that when we come home or we finished our day, that we know in our, in our being that the things that I needed to do today, I did them. That we don't have any regrets. It's not a nice place to be. But before we sing that song, I want to pray for us. And actually, I wanted us to pray this prayer together, but too much partying last night that I didn't get to send it to dinner. And perhaps I wouldn't have been able to, to get it because he was too much partying himself. But let me just pray this for us. And if it's a prayer that you listen to and it resonates with you and you want it, then come and see me and I'll give you a copy. So let's just pray. And I must say, this is a prayer by the wonderful A. Dominic Towser. Well, not quite his prayer, but I've adapted it. But it's a beautiful prayer. So let's pray. I come to you today, Lord. We come to you today. To give up our rights. To lay down our lives. To offer you our future. To give you our devotion, our skills, our strength, all of it. We will not waste time worrying about any weaknesses we have or how unqualified we might be for the task you're giving us. We acknowledge your choice with the things that you have set aside for us to do. We come to you now for spiritual preparation. Put your hand on us. Anoint us, Lord. Help us not to compromise on the things you lay on our hearts to do. Protect our souls from small ambitions when you have told us that we will do even greater things than you. Help us not to waste precious time. We accept hard work. We're not asking for an easy life. And help us not to judge those who seem to have an easier life than we do. Show us those things that cripple our spiritual power that you have given us through your Holy Spirit. So Lord, we want to now consecrate our days, all of our days, to you. Make what you want more precious to us than anything or anybody. Help us to use the power that you have already placed in us. So that the end of this life's journey and when we see you face to face we will hear those undeserving words well done you good and faithful servant amen
Jesus' name. Amen.
Um, thank you everybody for coming today and um, for listening to what I have to share. My prayer is that the light will continue to shine in the dark areas and for you to be encouraged that even when it feels like the light is about to go out, it's not possible to extinguish it, to hold on to hope and keep going. So let's share the grace. May the grace of Jesus Christ.